right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from a pretty hot San Diego at the moment, actually, a bit of a heat wave going on here. But today I am joined by Paxton Gray, who is in Salt Lake City, Utah. How are you doing, Paxton? Good, how are you, John? Good. 101 Paxton, over here. Yeah, so it's not quite that hot, so yeah. <laughs> but... You know, nobody really ever listens to you when you complain about the weather in San yeah. Diego. So. Yeah. Um, okay. And Paxton is 97floored.com uh, and was going to talk about how to get the biggest bang from your buck in digital marketing. So, um, first of all, um, 97th Floor, where does the name come from? Yeah. So, when we started 15 years ago, uh, our CEO actually started in kind of his, his basement uh, just as a, as a consultant. And uh, we uh, landed a, a pretty sizable client and they needed to invoice us and they needed a, a company name. And back then there wasn't any, it was just uh, our CEO. And so uh, he, he was talking with his wife and he really wanted something that had like an LA or New York vibe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was gonna call it the 100th floor. And his wife said like, oh, no, 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 that sounds terrible. Like it's so hard to say. 97 sound, like, sounds so much better, it rolls off the tongue. And so I said, all right, domain name was, was, was available and uh, the rest is it. history. Excellent, I, lo I love it. Okay, so um, maybe uh, if we start off by a definition of digital marketing, because it's a term that's thrown around a lot of the times and I think sometimes folks don't really understand exactly what it means. Sure, and in fact, I, uh, I actually don't love the term myself because uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think of it as marketing and sure. then the old stuff is traditional marketing. Uh, but really, digital marketing, uh, when most people say digital, they're referring to ads, uh, uh, any kind of organic or PR things, uh, but basically all of the normal marketing things that take place online. So building websites, content, SEO, advertising, um, uh, design, uh, interactives, all that kind of stuff, analytics, uh, all that good stuff that's online and digital, that's, that's kind of what uh, people mean when they say digital marketing. And so what are, you, what are some of the things that you, uh, that you see that are working well from a digital marketing perspective now? Maybe, maybe some things that aren't even that obvious to people. The beautiful thing with digital marketing is that you can see what happens from beginning to end, mm -hmm. which is pretty new. Uh, and that's what I see most businesses have a challenge with. You'd be surprised how many companies come to us and have no analytics set up, they don't have right. goals or they don't see the conversion path, but there's so much power in that. So uh, if you are doing digital marketing correctly, you can see where they came from, what they did, and when they converted, how much they converted, uh, what they do after, uh, and just get so much insight in that. And that allows you to build marketing that is going to be more likely to resonate with your audience uh, than marketing, which historically we've had to rely on our gut, our intuition, mm -hmm. our, our best practice or whatever. Uh, the beautiful thing with digital marketing is you can throw it out the window. We don't need that anymore. You don't need your gut. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what we think as marketers. Uh, what matters is what the audience wants and, and what the market wants. So uh, what's working is really just figuring out ways to learn about your market, learn about what they uh, interact with and react to uh, best, and then giving them, giving them what they want. So through content, mm -hmm. uh, SEO, and advertising, uh, all those areas are, are things that businesses should be doing to affect the entire kind of funnel and cycle. Uh, in their digital marketing campaigns, and then how do you help? Uh, how do you help companies figure out the the best the best places to be and where to put their money for digital marketing? Because I think sometimes people kind of jump around and they think, "Oh, I need to be on every platform and I need to be trying to reach as broad as possible." But that's rarely a good strategy. Yeah, what you need to do is uh, be willing to test, know how to measure, know how to analyze that, and then know how to double down correctly to amplify. Uh, the positive things that you've seen in your tests. So uh, right, right now, a lot of companies, uh, you know, say it's smaller business, your budgets are smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to first learn about your audience, which you can do for free. Uh, just setting up simple surveys, talking to your customers. Uh, I mean, the number one thing marketers should do is talk to customers, which is sometimes the number one things they're not doing. <laughs> that they uh, don't do. Mm -hmm. But learn, learn where your customers live, learn what kind of content they consume, what platforms are they on, and then that's where you start your experiments. 
Uh, people are often surprised in the B2B space, which I'd imagine a lot of sure. you know, people in sales are working in. Uh, Instagram, great place to be for B2B. And people don't think, you know, they think, ah, Instagram is, is for, for pictures of babies and puppies. And mm. when I want to do my serious business work, you go to LinkedIn. Well, the problem with that is that's what everyone else thinks. Yeah. And your market is not on LinkedIn. Salespeople probably frequent, and I'm making a huge gut, like, sure guess here but linkedin is probably much more frequently used among other salespeople than it is the people who are buying your product they're on instagram so yeah. uh, i mean i've seen case studies of, of uh people killing it through instagram direct messages uh and just being there because only i the last that i saw only 20 percent of b2b businesses are actually on instagram i mean yeah, you can guess that, what kind of percentage are on linkedin no absolutely and uh, and I find actually I'm I'm terrible. I find Instagram all those ads. They find them totally addictive. I'm always clicking on. Yeah. I mean I don't click on ads anywhere else, but for some reason I click on Instagram ads all the time. Yeah. Yep. Good platform to be on. But the point of all of this is, forget what what you think you know. Mm -hmm. None of that matters. It doesn't matter what you think people will find funny. It doesn't matter what you think people will resonate with. Uh, what you got to do is just test and be willing to break down any kind of assumptions you had. Uh, because yeah. people think differently than you, you know, and, and that's hard for us to understand sometimes just as humans that people think differently than we do. And I think the other thing too is, is you you were just saying a moment ago about, you know, being funny. And I mean, there's something that seems to be creeping in where people think that, okay, to catch people's attention now, I got to be quirky and I got to be funny and all of that, but that doesn't always suit every brand. And it's, and to me, it's kind of cringy sometimes when you see that stuff. Uh, when it's maybe a B2B purchase or a company that you're looking for and you're looking for something serious, like to do a certain thing and, they, and they're all kind of quirky and funny and then you're like, well, I'm not sure I really trust these people because you know, that's yeah. not really what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, understanding. I mean, usually the key is knowing what you want them to think about you mm -hmm. and then having all your marketing line up behind that goal. If you want them to think you're quirky, then do the quirky stuff. But if you want yeah. them to think you're serious and trustworthy the quirky stuff may or may not actually fit with that so knowing what your end destination is is key to that yeah and i and i think that's a, that's part of the problem i don't think people often enough do the research and i think that's why you get a lot of people spending a lot of marketing dollars on just doing what they think everybody else is doing yeah yep it's surprising it's surprising how many people come to us and they don't have analytics set up or we come and ask them about their audience and they don't really know, uh, which honestly, at first I was like, boy, that's insane. But then I was like, you know, there's a lot of things you got to deal with when you're running a business. Sure. And, and yeah, uh, yeah. oftentimes, you know, getting that market insight, it doesn't, it's not one of those, it, it's not the quadrant that's on fire and urgent, you know, and, and high important right now. It's something that's really important, but not urgent. So it often gets put on the back burner. So when you tell, when you, when people initially come to you, how do you help them through that process of figuring out the number one, like who their, you know, who their audience yeah. is, that their, what their brand voice is, all of those things. How do you help people with that? Yeah. So number one is uh, we're going to get into analytics and set up all tracking, make sure that you know exactly what's happening on your site. Uh, you know how it's converting, you know, uh, you know, we'll set up goals for macro conversions, which is ultimately mm -hmm either the lead or the purchase or whatever the biggest point of your site is. And then we'll also set up goals for micro conversions that lead up to that macro conversion. So that gives us good insight into right. what's happening on the site, what's working, what's not working. Uh, and then we also do a lot of kind of market research. Uh, we will, uh, there's some software that we use that uh, get us uh, insight into social. Uh, we do uh, lots and lots of really extensive keyword research to find out what people are asking mm -hmm. for. And then we also do something that we call a, a CXR. It's a customer experience review. And, right. and in that CXR, what we do is we put ourselves in the shoes of a customer who has never heard of your business before. And we mm. look at all of your competitors and that gives us an idea of the landscape. Someone who is looking for your product, what else are they seeing? Uh, and that's something that people are often very blind to. If most of your competitors are calling this feature X, and you're calling that same feature Y, you're unnecessarily confusing people. And mm -hmm. so that gives us a good idea into what the landscape looks like. And then we'll go through and we'll go through the entire purchase cycle. We'll sign up for your email newsletter. We will go through all the way to purchase and see what works and what doesn't work, what's weird. 
uh, at what kind of content looks like it does point to ultimate conversion, what looks like it's not very relevant. Mm -hmm. We'll kind of kind of analyze the site from that, put together in this big massive report uh, and deliver it with recommended changes. Uh, and then uh, what we do from there is test. So uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of conversion or optimization and A-B yeah. testing. And, and yeah. so we're kind of going through from there and saying like what forms work, what don't, we'll, we'll run these tests and, and see what resonates with the audience and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And I think obviously probably one of the biggest things that you need to do though is to you know, help people understand the time frame and how much work is involved in this. Because let's face it, A-B testing alone, that's not an overnight thing you have to do for a period of time. And then you have to, uh, as you well know, then you have to limit, you know, one variable at a time and all this kind of stuff. Yep. So how, how, much of you, uh, how much do you have to kind of explain to people that this isn't the, you can't put together a marketing campaign, just launch it and then everything's going to be good, that this stuff takes time. I mean, the, the research and the analytics takes time. Yeah, we, we have, uh, like I said, we've been around for 15 years and, mm -hmm. and uh, our agency has grown without much of a sales force or really any of our own marketing. It's just word of mouth. Um, and so we, for a long time, kind of sat back and we're like, well, we're just so good at our jobs that we don't mm -hmm. need to worry, you know, like, um, but then, you know, probably about five, six years ago, it really started to hit us like, we can't just be really good at our jobs. We also have to be really good at education. And so we've built out a lot of resources so that as we're doing things with our clients, we're also investing pretty heavily in educating them about what we're doing, how we're doing it, what we're seeing from our perspective. And then it's also really important to get their perspective and, and you know, they're coming from a different place because we need to learn how to speak their language rather than insisting that they speak mm. our language which is really important, uh, we've learned just through trial and error uh, to, to getting on the same page and, and becoming really a true partner with our clients as opposed to you know, just fulfillment and, and, and uh, we're just here to do a job and then we're out. You know? Yeah, because I think that's a critical piece because like I said, I think a lot of people don't understand the, the time frames. They don't understand how in depth this is. They're expect let's face it, everybody always expects immediate results and and if they don't expect immediate results they certainly expect them quicker than you can really deliver those because uh, sure. everything takes a little longer and especially if you're going to do it properly and i think obviously the other thing is is uh working hard with them to really nail down the metrics and the kpis that are relevant to them and their business yeah yep yeah that's key we used to uh have most of our contracts kind of just say, you know, and this is crazy, this is 15 years ago, before anyone knew anything about digital mm -hmm. marketing. And we would kind of say, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna work really hard, and this mm -hmm. is how much we'll charge you. And they said, okay, great, you guys do your thing. Uh, and that's, that's bonkers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, so we, all, all of our engagements are based around KPIs, and that's really the main job of our salespeople. It's not to convince them to go with 97 floor, it's mm -hmm. to translate their needs into solid KPIs, then we can set goals and say, okay, well, based off of your budget and based off what, uh, 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 your time frame, this is what we can expect to achieve within 12 months, uh, pulling these certain levers. And so that's really their, their goal is to translate the customer's needs into uh, our tactics and, and make sure that we're, we're in alignment. But you're, you're correct. KPIs, uh, when it comes to working with an agency is key. You don't, you don't want an agency that uh, I mean, we'll do del we'll do hourly or deliverables if people want, but what you really want is an agency that's going to work off of KPIs and say, hey, mm -hmm. listen, you pull whatever levers you need to, as long as my brand's protected, as long as you're doing good quality work, and we hit those numbers, I'm happy, you're happy, that's great. And I guess the other thing that you have to manage expectation around is the cost of digital marketing because your people think, well, it's being delivered digitally, so it's um, it's got to be pretty cheap compared with traditional yeah. marketing. But as we've seen, like with Google AdWords and other things, it can get prohibitive, prohibitively expensive pretty fast. Yeah, that's the trick. That's the trick with digital is it can be free and mm -hmm. uh, you can get results with very little investment depending on how you do it, the situation, your niche. But if you're going to be running ads, that's, that's an easy way to lose a lot of money if you don't know what you're mm -hmm. doing. Uh, LinkedIn is notorious for that. You can dump thousands of dollars into LinkedIn and get nothing out of it so easily yeah. and very quickly. So 
it kind of just depends on what you're looking for. If you got really aggressive goals, you're actually going to end up wasting a lot more money and time by trying to pinch pennies than sure. by doing it the correct way. But you know, if you're running a startup and you're by yourself and you've got no fun and you're trying to bootstrap this, you can do pretty amazing things at a very low cost. You're not going to be running ads, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, you can do some solid SEO, some solid content if you got the time, uh, uh, you know, so that's kind of, you can live in, in either world, but it kind of depends on your stage and who you're going up against. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think we've seen a lot of people who just thought, uh, you know, just throw a lot of money into Google AdWords and life is lovely and realize that maybe you're in a, I mean, for instance, in the, you know, in this with pipeline or CRM in the CRM space, really expensive keyword. It's the, it is yeah. what it is. If you want to compete up there, you're going to be paying a lot of money for it. I think knowing, as you said, knowing the market you're in, knowing the cost of things, you can make a more um, informed decision rather than just throw a lot of money at an issue. Yeah. Yeah, and the trick, I mean, especially if you're if you're the David go, going up against the Goliath, mm -hmm. you don't want to do it with ads. I mean, you can, yeah. but you need to go around it. So, mm -hmm. you know, someone searches CRM, I mean, you're going up against HubSpot. Those guys have, sure. I mean, they may have more marketers than developers. Uh, I don't know, but who knows? Anyway, the, the great way to go around the Goliaths is through content. So what you need to do is sit there, you need to understand your audience and then think, someone who is interested in a CRM, what other things are they interested in? And then go after those. Mm. Uh, Capital One, you know, we've done some work with Capital One. They have this huge problem with NerdWallet. NerdWallet right. has articles about, you know, uh, how to save money on your cable bill. Uh, you know, best, I'm making this up, best, cheapest sure. microwave dinners or whatever, you know, all these, all these kinds of things. And Capital One kind of sat there and thought, well, we're a credit card company. We don't need to write about that. You know, we're the behemoths. Well, suddenly mm -hmm. NerdWallet produces all this content for years and years and years, and they start referring business over to Capital One. Well, they get a cut of that. Well, now NerdWallet is eating their lunch because they're mm -hmm. willing to write about so much content that the same people who are interested in credit cards are interested in this other stuff too, and they sure. earn that traffic and that brand awareness and then just pass it over to Capital One. Now they're kind of trapped. So <laughs> that's the way to beat the giant Goliath is through consistent, steady, unique, great content. And that's something that a lot of Goliaths, frankly, are not interested or even mm -hmm. able to invest in truly uh, yeah. without big momentous movement within the organization. So, so yeah, you don't want to go after a CRM. You want to go after, you know, how to motivate a sales team. What's mm -hmm. a great pay structure for a sales team in 2020 or, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I couldn't agree more. Hey, listen, Paxton, this has been fantastic. All of Paxton's information will be in the contributor bio. But before we go, please do tell everyone a little bit more about yourself and 97th Floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, 97th Floor, we specialize in just digital marketing. We don't do any traditional, but we do a hell of a job in SEO, uh, advertising, content, and design. So uh, mm -hmm. if you need anything full funnel uh, analytics, like hit us up. Uh, you can reach us at up at 97thfloor.com. Or you can also reach me if you want to chat more about digital marketing industry stuff, uh, Paxton at 97thfloor.com. Uh, and also look me up on LinkedIn too. Uh, if you just search Paxton Gray, I should be uh, the first, first result there. Excellent. And uh, yeah, and I'd encourage you to check out you know, Paxton and his company because here's the thing, you can do a lot of this stuff on your own, but it's a lot more difficult than you really probably think. And you can end up spending a lot more money than if you actually worked with, uh, worked with an expert in the first place. It's, it's, it's gotten more, it's, it's getting and it's gotten more and more complex, I think. And especially because as you would know, you've got constant algorithm changes and things like that. And yep. And more competitive. And more competitive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. And thanks again, Paxton. Thank you. It was a pleasure.